Today I'd like to give you five mechanic tips, tricks, hacks, whatever you want to call them, and make you glad you watched this video today. Insanely cool cars, tool reviews, and auto repair videos. First, I want to show you a trick with wrenches. This is a two-in-one trick. Now, you can put the 9 sixteenths on here, and you're not going to be able to break this loose very easily. As a matter of fact, you can put so much force, you're going to come around here and take some skin off. So, you want to take and double up on your wrenches. But before you do that, this is why it's a two-in-one, notice that 14 monkey meters is supposed to be the same as 9 sixteenths. But is it? The 14 on there? And look, yeah, you got a little bit of slack. But the 9 sixteenths, you got a lot of slack. So not exactly the same. So put the 14 on here. Then I use the 9 sixteenths for the added leverage. And not only do I have the added leverage now, which is just free strength, but I'm further away from everything that's going to cut the crap out of me. Oh, you hear that cracking and popping? That was tight. Number two, the pull chain. Let's say you got a tight space, and by the time you get the wrench down in there, you can't pull on the thing. So you get a chain, and you hook it on the wrench. Or you're down near the ground, and you don't want to be near the ground. You just want to hook on and get up here where you're nice and comfortable. And you can even put your hand right about knee height, and put your knee underneath your hand, and then pop. There's a bunch of ways that that pull chain can make your life easier. Can you think of a couple of ways? Put them in the comments. Tip number three is also a twofer. Starts with uh, organizing yourself a bolt bin. Because a good collection of nuts and bolts can save you a tremendous amount of time, and I'm going to show you one of the ways it can save you. If you're trying to get a stud out, you can make a tool with two nuts, one on there, and it doesn't have to be, you know, a lock nut like this, just like this. It could be just two plain nuts like this, but it does help if it's a little bit of a lock nut like that. You tighten these two against each other, like so. Then you can back the stud out with a wrench, a socket, or an impact. All right, number four, you got things like these Torx bit heads, and then you've got Allen heads, and you've got Phillips heads. First of all, if you're dealing with some of these, you want to take like a pick or a pocket screwdriver or something and make sure you clean out in here where the tool is supposed to go. Clean it out real good so your tool can go all the way down in there. Don't leave anything in there because you got to get as deep in there as possible to get a good grip. And another thing, this is a very handy tool to have. This is called an impact driver. Now, this doesn't have to be just for motorcycles and Phillips heads like this, even though it does work very well for that. You put it up against there, and you go like you're going to turn it, but you don't turn it yet. You just hold it a little bit of pressure on it like you're going to turn it. Get a good grip. It's got knurled edges here. And then you smack it with the hammer. And it won't just drive some impact in there. It'll actually turn a slight bit as it impacts. And it's just the right amount of timing, just the right amount of impact, and it'll break that loose without stripping it out. It works on Allens and on Torx because you can take your Allen bit or your Torx bit and put it right on there. Isn't that neat? I'll put a link to one of these on Amazon in the description. Now, five is any kind of electrical connector. Take the electrical connectors loose. Like you 
putting an engine, taking the engine out, putting the engine back in, and you've got all these electrical connectors you need to put back together. They usually have some little piece of rubber, and as you go to put it in, it's hard to get it all the way down in there. And the electric, dielectric grease is going to do a couple of things. One, it's going to give you a little bit of lube, makes it easier for that connector to get back down in there. Doesn't take a lot. Put it all over the connector. It's going to keep the moisture out of the electrical part of the connector, and it's going to lube the rubber part of the connector so that it's easy to get it to push all the way in there. A lot of the GM connectors and other connectors, you'll see some kind of grease in there. It's just the factory version of the dielectric grease. And it doesn't hurt to put a little bit more of it in there whenever you put electrical connectors together. They sell this pretty cheap and on Amazon too. I get these big tubes because I use a lot of it. Uh, the smaller tubes are in the part stores. Well, these bigger tubes I think are in the part stores too, but they're quite a bit more in the part store for the big tube than they, than they are on Amazon. If you like these tips and you want to see some more, then click the link to the playlist full of these tips or just watch my repair videos. I usually give one or two tips during the repair while I'm using the hacks and tips or comment below what it is you need to know a hack about. Maybe there's something I forgot to film and you can help remind me.